Hey everyone, my name is Faith and today I'm going to be talking to you about farming concrete. So before I go into more details about what that is and what it's about, I just wanted to let you know a little bit about myself. So I'm making these videos, there will be three videos where I talk about this program that I found, a compost bin that I've been making, and also some lean organizing principles and techniques that I've learned about, not necessarily from the farmer I was interning with, but from his books. So he has some really amazing books that I highly suggest. Um, and I'm going to try to see in that video how I can maybe apply those things in my garden as I start to begin doing all the things I'm going to do with it. So I have a lot of things in mind that I'd like to do and along the way I think it'll be good that I keep those types of principles and things in mind to be more organized. So in this video though I'm talking about farming concrete. So what is farming concrete? Farming concrete is a website that provides an outlet to input and utilize data from urban agriculture settings. So in, it started in 2009 in New York by those behind Farming Concrete and the Design Trust for Public Space. From 2009 to 2012, Farming Concrete provided approximately 200 free scales, record keeping materials, training and customized reports to New York City gardeners who recorded through their online platform. By 2015, the reach from New York outward seemed needed, so fellows of the Design Trust and those behind Farming Concrete expanded their website and put all forms and protocols on it free to the public. And it's still that way now. They state on their website that they are the first ever public interface for collecting, tracking, and analyzing urban agriculture production and a variety of benefits that community gardens, urban farms, and school gardens generate worldwide. So they've broke it down into these five categories where you can collect or you can input and then collect the data. And they are food production, environmental data, social data, health, and economic data. And underneath each of those categories are found the 16 different protocols, they call it, which, are which just break down what they're looking for by each of those categories. And so, like under food production data, they have crop count, harvest count, you include a gardener's name, a crop variety, and weight. And the environmental data, they're looking for th things like landfill waste diversion by volume, but also by weight. And then compost production by volume, but also by weight. And then they even have ca different um, input areas for rainwater harvesting. Under social data, for instance, there's participation by geography or participation by task. They ask for an area where you input the skills and knowledge that are in the garden that day that you're recording so that everything's by date. And there's also then things like the reach of the programs. So you're able to log your hours and whether or not you collaborated with other organizations. So beyond the social data, then there is still the health data and the economic data. So under health data, they allow you to put in things like changes in attitude as to do with like, there's an activity they call yum and yuck, and they even provide a worksheet on their website and even videos on how to do that type of thing in your community and things like good moods in the garden was what was the attitude like in and maybe even going out the there's a healthy eating section of the health data where you can put in any recipes and how many of them you may have used or talked about and there's also a spot for the beauty found in the garden where people can post and tag photos beyond that there's then the economic data where you can log your market sales and that's a uh, what kind of products that you're marketing, how much it is price-wise, and how much it weighs. And then there's a donations of food area or protocol where you can mark down what you sold or what you gave and, and how much. So that's basically the five things. And one thing that I personally really love is that after you've entered your data into what they call the barn, which is where you find all of those five cat uh, categories, 
You can then print a report with graphs that detail your output or even download your raw data with a click of a button. So that could be useful beyond just using that program where someone like me is learning QGIS, and, which is a quantum geospatial information system, open source that anybody can download online and learn how to do. There's forums where people help each other figure it out and all sorts of things for that. And that's like a visual data collection system. So I could take that data I've now got there, download it, put it on QGIS and make different maps and things with it, which is really exciting for me. And that's really awesome, I think, and a really great start for us to be able to understand more about what urban agriculture is doing now and what it's capable of doing in the future.